Franz Halls is known primarily for his portraits. He's going to move away from the formulas that are common in portraiture due to a new clientele and a more modest sense of Calvinism. So as opposed to Catholicism, Calvinism is based on a lot of ideas around modesty and humility. And so that's going to come out in the art, in the portraits that we're going to see. The result is a style that seems much more open and much more relaxed. Basically, he's bringing out a sense of informality. So let's compare this to portraits of today. Very commonly, and here we see a portrait from some fraternity at Harvard, you get the idea of who these people are, but you have no idea, well, you have an idea of who, what they look like, but not who they are. We have no sense of interaction, friendships, personalities, or anything else. Whereas when Halls creates these informal portraits, he's going to focus on relationships between people, individual personalities, and a lot of other ideas that we don't typically see in group portraiture, even today. Halls is really unique in this way, and he will be influential later on on, well, some bigger names in art. So the first piece we're looking at is the Archers of St. Hadrian. Now, this canvas reflects the widespread popularity of paintings which commemorate the Dutch burghers' involvement in civic organizations. The Dutch burghers are really the predecessors to McDonald's, Wendy's, Hardy, I need to read the right notes. The Dutch burghers are basically the middle class. They're heavily involved in civic organizations. And in this case, what you're actually seeing is a group of Dutch burghers who were involved in the militia companies that, that played a large role in the independence of their burgeoning nation. Now, the group portrait is generally more challenging due to the number of figures and their relationships within the work. This group would meet on their patron saint's feast day, dress up, and feast. And it's really no different than the parades you might see on Veterans Day, where military units will get back together. They'll dress in their uniforms. They'll march in the parade, remember their shared stories, and then usually have a feast party or meet at a bar. Each man in the group is a member of the group, and yet they're individual. Some gaze at the viewer while others are engaging each other. This impromptu effect allows Halls to energize the portrait while preserving the fleeting facial expressions that may speak to the man's character and the individuals as a group. And as we look at it, you can see, I've pointed out with arrows, some of these interactions. People who might look up to one another, people who might be friends. Here's a man who's probably a little bit more bookish. Here's someone who looks up to this man. Maybe there's a close relationship. We can tell who the leaders are. We can tell who the more general soldiers are. We get a sense of who each man is, their personality. For example, someone who might be very spiritual, someone who might be very stoic. We get a sense of interaction. We get a sense of what this group is beyond simply what everyone looks like. Now, interestingly, there's no sign of preparatory sketch. Rather, it appears that the artist worked completely from life in the moment, more than likely creating the layout and then coming back and meeting with each individual to create the facial expressions. Now, interestingly, I also want to call your attention to the back. We see two people walking away, ghostly figures. These are thought to be two members of the group that had died in combat. And so they're included in the portrait, but they're these ghostly figures that aren't really part of it at this point because, of course, they aren't there for the commemoration. They died in battle. So it's these little elements that really draw us into Hall's portraits, these group portraits. They're going to be so important in the Dutch 17th century.